Next, let's take a look at ligand-gated ion channel receptors. The, this is our last category of those membrane-associated receptors that we're going to talk about here in Chapter 11. Uh, lucky for us, ligand-gated ion channel receptors are much easier to understand, in my opinion, than your GPCRs and your RTKs. Here's how they function, and then we'll, we're going to go ahead and take a look at where they are mostly applicable. Uh, so, ligand-gated ion channel receptor. So we know it's a receptor. It's going to receive a signaling molecule. It is also an ion channel, which means it has the ability to allow ions to pass across the membrane very easily. But remember, we talked about ion channels back in chapter seven, and we do know that ion channels can be gated, which means that they can be opened or closed based on um, a, some sort of stimulus. So in this case, this is a ligand gated ion channel, which means that it will open or close if a ligand is bound or unbound uh, to the ion channel. So in this case, we've got our ligand gated ion channel receptor. And currently in this uh, example, the gate is closed. So no ions are passing through the channel. Along comes a signaling molecule, or our ligand. Once a ligand binds to the receptor, that is going to open up the gate. And when the gate opens, you get an influx of these ions across the membrane. If you want the gate to close, then the ligand or the signaling molecule has to hop off. Once it hops off the receptor, then that gate will close and no more of those ions are allowed to pass across. These, uh, Ligand gated ion channels can allow, again, very specific ions to pass through, like sodium ions or calcium ions uh, through that channel. And so recall that when we talk about ion channels, um, they're typically going to be very specific for one type of ion, right? One type of ion will be allowed to pass across the membrane. So where are uh, cells going to use ligand gated ion channel receptors? Um, well, let me go ahead and bring up my whiteboard here. This is very commonly used in the nervous system. So I've drawn parts of two neurons. So I've got a neuron on the left, I've got a neuron on the right. The one on the left is called the presynaptic neuron, and the one on the right is called the postsynaptic neuron. And the space in between them is called the synapse, or the synaptic cleft. And so what we learned about earlier in um, chapter seven, remember that every cell has a membrane potential, right? Uh, the outside of the cell is going to be positively charged and then the inside is going to be negative negatively charged as part of the normal membrane potential uh, but the way that neurons send their electrical impulses remember the charges are going to flip very briefly for a small section of the membrane and that is that electrical uh, signal that gets sent down the membrane of a neuron well, once it gets to the end of that neuron, it has this big cleft to jump across to get to the next cell. And without a membrane, that message can't get across the cleft. So what gives? Well, by the time the electrical impulse gets to the end of the presynaptic cell, there's a response that happens there that's typically based on calcium ions that causes the vesicles that are found in the presynaptic cell that are filled with neurotransmitter to fuse with the membrane at the very end of the cell here. And so if we, let's say, erase part of the membrane here and show one of these vesicles fusing with the membrane, what that does is it dumps a whole bunch of those neurotransmitters that that vesicle was holding into the synaptic cleft. Well, now the postsynaptic cell, this one still positive on the outside, negative on the inside, what it has are a whole bunch of receptors in that synaptic cleft. And these receptors just so happen to be able to interact with the neurotransmitter that was released from the presynaptic cell. And these receptors happen to be those ligand-gated 
ion channel receptors. And the ligand is the neurotransmitter. So once the neurotransmitter docks to that receptor, it causes the floodgates to open. And once the ion channel opens, that allows a whole bunch of those sodium ions, positively charged ions, to come rushing back into the cell. And that flips the membrane potential. So all of a sudden now, we've created a brand new electrical impulse in this cell when for a brief uh, moment and part of the membrane, because these ligand-gated ion channels opened up and allowed all the sodium to flood into the inside of the cell, right here you're going to have that positive charge to the membrane on the inside, negative on the outside. That'll then cause the voltage-gated ion channels further down to open up, and the electrical impulse will then continue flipping back and forth, back and forth, um, all the way down then the rest of the membrane here. Um, and that will allow the electrical impulse then to pass um, down that second cell until, again, it meets another synaptic cleft and the whole neurotransmitter release process will happen again. So many lesson there in uh, neuroscience. So those are our ligand-gated ion channel receptors.